Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Francisco. Welcome to the Biceps Information for Kidney and Related Conditions. This is a video blog destined to help patients to understand a little bit more about their kidney disease. Patients, other relatives, other caregivers. So they can be more equipped to handle their disease and care better, take better decisions with their own doctors, so they end up with less complications and less worries. Today we're going to discuss a very important topic, that is fluid restriction. But we're going to focus on why is fluid restriction so important for patients with chronic kidney disease, especially advanced kidney disease, or kidney failure on dialysis. One of the functions of the kidneys is to control the content of body water. Typically, if one drinks too much water, the kidneys will eliminate the excess of it by passing more urine. If one is, on the contrary, dehydrated, the kidneys will conserve the water, shrinking the urine volume. When the kidneys do not work that well, their capacity to control the amount of fluid in the body is impaired. Especially, patients cannot excre excrete that excess of water and they start retaining it. This excess of water is retained in the legs, in the beginning, sometimes also in the eyes, but it can go to other organs and it can even flood the lungs. And you can imagine what can cause. We have commented that before. Breathlessness, heart failure, potentially endangering life. The excess of water also worsens the blood pressure and as a consequence damage many organs. So as the disease progresses, many patients need to undergo restriction of water and any other type of fluids. Of food which is watery, like some fruits like watermelon, soups, porridges, smoothies, etc things that are fluid. The size of the restriction, meaning how much fluid you can intake or you need to restrict, varies patient to patient, depending on how much urine they can pass, the stage of kidney disease, other complications, etc. Patients with fluid overload or advanced kidney disease benefit also from restriction of salt. This is because salt increases thirst. So, you can prevent that process. Less salt, less thirst. But also salt is like a sponge for water. So it will aid in the retention of it. And salt will make more difficult blood pressure control. Besides, the restriction of salt also will allow some medications to work better. And a diet lowering salt is also protective for the heart and your entire cardiovascular system. Having water restricted, I can imagine, is not nice. But it is so important and crucial for your care and your well-being so, it is very important that you are cognizant of that so that you can implement not only the prescription, not only the restrictions, but also can implement some tips and tricks. In Francisco Kilian Medical Center, we also advise our patients how can practically uh, improve the water restriction. Doing a food diary, a water diary in this case, but Obviously, we do food diary for at the same time. You can also quantify how much water you're getting. It's the first stage because then we know exactly how much water realistically you're taking because many patients actually claim that they are doing the restriction very well. I, I trust them, but if you ask me how much water I drink in a day, I don't know. So maybe a lot, maybe 
I'm not totally sure because unless I really quantify it or start paying more attention to it. Otherwise, maybe I'm thinking too little or maybe too much. So that's why sometimes patients, if not quantified, if you don't quantify it or, or your, you know, your loved one, you don't help them on that or tell them how to do it, it's a little bit more difficult to realize if you are actually uh, restricting or not because patients put on weight four kilograms and they say, oh, have only drink one liter of water. Basically, to put on weight from one, let's say, dialysis space, from one dialysis to another, they would have had to drink four liters of water or fluids, etc. So there were three liters that maybe where they come from. I trust the patient that they, they believe that they are doing their best, etc. But now when we do the food diary and we start now quantifying or digging, they will realize, oh, is the watermelon here? Or they were referring to water only, not every other drink. They were not counting the milkshakes, the coffees, uh, the soups, the porridges. Or maybe they thought that this bowl, bowl is small, but it's actually quite big, and that is a bowl of, of 500 mils, already half a liter of soup there. So, so it's important uh, to do a food diary. Then we can, then we know what is the issue, where the water is coming from, so we can advise. And then in my info, four liters, tell them to restrict to 500 is not realistic. But what I advise my patients is progressive, you know, improvement. You cut a little bit, you are drinking this and this and this and that, just okay. Reduce a little bit, 20, 25% of that uh, glass of water. Don't, you know, don't fill it all the way to the top. Just maybe 20 or 25% less. Yeah? The same, the soup, don't feel it like normal, just maybe a little bit. And that 20 or 25% here, here, and there, and there, and there, eventually can translate for the next dialysis, maybe in 500, 750, or even a liter less of water. And with that, because just a little tiny change, they might not feel it that much. Could be a little bit less, could be 15%, whatever, but indeed that there was a, a reduction. But what I mean, a little bit of reduction here and there and there translate eventually into a fluid reduction for the next dialysis, for the whole week, for the whole month, for, for the rest of the life of the patient that is beneficial. Because it's not only what can happen that if one day you drink a lot of water and then your lungs get flooded, you go uh, get admitted, etc., and then remove the water, everything goes back to okay. No, the heart doesn't like that. And even the water doesn't push you to, to that state where you still have excess of water, sex of, of salt in your body. Your heart is overworking and is pushing it at some point at the risk of failure. So it's worth it doing that is potentially doable, I understand, can be not that nice to have a fluid restriction, but it's crucial for your health. And by doing in such way, little by little, by saying, okay, maybe this is the maximum I will drink, this is my one liter restriction, and feel like a, a bottle of water, one liter, so just so you can discover. Then you drink some soup, the soup has got maybe like 100 mils from that bottle, your measure bottle, just throw away 100 mils of water, you realize, oh, now I have 900 mils throughout the day. Maybe it's already half, it's noon, and you already finished that liter of water, you can realize, yes, probably you are drinking it too fast. There are many things people say, okay, you suck some lemon, or some spices, or you suck some ice, but obviously you suck some ice, could be better than gulping the water like this, no? But if you ice every every two minutes, every five minutes, one ice, then at the end of the day, that will transform in a lot of water. So you need to also do it in a in a way that sounds reasonable that you are reducing the water, or just don't drink the water, don't gulp the water, no, don't drink the water like look 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 look. You have one lit one liter here, one glass here. Don't just gulp it, you know. Just you know kiss it, <laughs> just drink it like it's an expensive wine, 
And so just little by little, sip it little by little. And those are little tricks and, and many others that you can use. But one reality is if you put next to your bed one liter of water, you probably will tend to drink that one, one liter of water. So put just half a liter next to your bed. You put two liters, you will have the availability. Also, if it's too available, it's most likely that you drink it. So also you can measure when you go out, don't, don't go out with the whole one liter bottle. Just take a 500 ml or, or something like that. Buy smaller cups, buy... Because sometimes, you know, it's, it's like going to, to Starbucks, you know, if you just... You, you can drink and that's enough to drink a small cup, but then you go for the largest because you just pay some extra cents and you end up drinking it. But just because it's just some extra sense to go larger, but not because you really need it. So it's a kind of the same principle. If you you have the possibility to, to drink more or it's available to you, you probably will end up consciously or unconsciously drinking it. So just apply those reductions in your diet and here and there and there and there, it will transform into a huge benefit through time. Even you cannot perceive it, but indeed patients that do that, they are controlling their way better. Yeah. They have to go for uh, less risky dialysis, for example, or they need to hospitalize less. And eventually they can have less episodes of heart failure. They can live longer and better than patients that eventually don't take this free restriction. But also remember what I mentioned that salt and, and, uh, and water come in place. You eat too much salt, obviously you're going to be thirsty and then you're going to drink water that is going to be retained because of the salt, etc. So also you need to break the balance, not only focus on the fluids, focus also on the salt. And there are also tricks to make the, the food also palatable. You say, oh, my food is not going to be palatable. You can put spices, you can put chili, you can do many things to give a taste. And also your palate, start learning. So before I was not eating many years ago, many too much salads or vegetables, thinking that are a little bit tasteless. But actually, when you start changing your mindset into that, you realize actually they're not tasteless. Just simply taste different and taste different than a, a salad or a, a, or a vegetable dish with a lot of sauce in that. Obviously, it's totally different, but they taste different. They also taste special. Also, you start appreciating those flavors. You don't, sometimes you realize that you don't need that you don't need meat with so much salt you don't need a soup with so much salt you don't need eggs with so much salt you, you're also your taste and your palate and your start you know getting used to that and train and even appreciating especially when you are putting it into that something healthy when you say yes i'm doing it because it's healthy because it's what i need what my body needs what my disease care needs etc it's easy to take if you just say it, okay, oh my God, is the restriction. I don't know how how the dietitian tell me that I have to restrict what is not realistic. Who who drinks only half a liter of a day? Yes, I can feel it. I drink, I have a bottle of water with me all the time. But in your case, it's very important. But if you see it like that, obviously it's going to be very difficult. When you say, oh, it's unfortunate that I have to restrict my water. I love water, everyone loves water, but it's very important for my care because I want to avoid this and that and that, and because I want to fulfill all these dreams. The, the advice given by the dietitian seems sensical, seems it's practical. I think I can do it. I can accommodate with a little bit reduction here and there. And obviously, if I reduce, I'm going to have some benefit. I'm going to have a deficit. Often, obviously, I should keep should feel some changes or protect my heart as an investment, etc. So when you start seeing it with different mindset, a more positive, a more receptive of change, when you are start adopting it like probably this is the best for you, and when you say yes, probably I can learn how to, you know, drink less water, eat with less salt. People do it for weight loss. I did it when I lost my weight, etc. It sounds not 
it sounds not easy in the beginning, but you can, with the right strategy, with the right mindset, with the right support, you can get there and you can realize that it's actually not that difficult. And yes, you can say, I mean, here you're saying that I'm the doctor, but I'm obviously, I'm observing, I'm, but I've seen patients who really have managed to do it. And those who have managed to do it, they have received a lot of benefits. But is a constellation, those patients decide to improve the diet, decide to improve the lifestyle, decide to live actively. So decide to take charge of their health and disease rather than the disease take charge of them. So is something we, we need to reflect as doctors, as patients, as caregivers. It's true, we can give a lot of advice, dietitians can give you a good prescription, but everything at the end lies on what you are going to do, what you can do every day, or how you're going to implement that. And if you're not implementing it, okay, no worries. That's why we are here. We're here, yes, to give you the advice, but then tune that advice and see what challenges and help you, etc., to guide you. Unfortunately, we cannot take the restriction for you. You will need to do it, but we are here to advise you and guide you. And if we advise you and guide you and you learn how to implement yourself all this, then you become empowered. An empowered patient, an empowered caregiver, indeed, is someone that can take more charge of their healthcare and control their disease better. Okay, so any comment, please put it in the comment section. If you like this advice, uh, please share the existence of this group um, and give me some likes, you know. I'm Dr. Francisco, wishing you the best possible health. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.